Hey guys, welcome to my early morning talk show kind of deal. Um, today I want to talk about using a voltmeter. Uh, for those of my followers that are not as mechanically inclined or just need a little help. Um, so this is my fluke meter. I bought it used off a tool truck for like $100 and I absolutely love this thing. Uh, so when you're doing electrical on cars, equipment, any kind of automotive application, um, you want to be using this. So that is a direct current voltage, which is what we use on equipment, cars, trucks, anything of that matter. The other thing that I use a lot is this little symbol right here. That is called ohms. Uh, that is great for testing wires. That is actually my favorite function. Um, so let me kind of talk to you about how I test some of these things. So, for example, this is a harness I cut off this grater. Um, it's a little, this is a shorter piece. I have a giant piece in there. But, let's say this is not cut off and there is a connector here. How I would test, so let's say I have a code for this sensor, okay? And this is how I would go about testing this. Um, the first thing I would do, this is a two pin connector, I would test the resistance between these two pins. Uh, I suggest getting a little terminal kit um, so you don't damage these, but you wanna check the resistance between these two pins with the Controller unplugged. That is a very important thing. If you are testing resistance in a circuit, unplug the controller. You will get false readings and all kinds of weird stuff if you keep the controller plugged in. But I'll be testing this connector using the ohms on that. I'm going to put the positive and negative on each terminal of this. Like I said, controller unplugged. You want to see like either OL, which means out of limits, or some mega ohm value. Uh, that means that they are not connected to each other, which is what you want to see. Um, if you get any kind of reading like one or two ohms or even like 20 ohms, uh, that means these wires are rubbed together somewhere in this harness and they are shorting to each other, which could be causing a code. Um, the next thing you want to do is, let's say, let's just pretend that this is the other side of the connector to this one. The next thing you want to do is go from, I know this is a three pin connector, but just bear with me. You want to take, look at the schematic and go from this pin for this wire to that wire's end on this side. Test the resistance on it. Now when you're testing, let's say we're testing this black wire to this black wire. It should have like, point zero one to five or six ohms. Um, that would mean it's good because it's it's the same wire, so you want this to be in connected to each other. If you get a reading that's OL or mega ohms, that means this wire is broken because there's an open in the circuit. OL means there is an, an extremely high amount of resistance, which probably means this wire is broken. But if you don't get that, if you get more like 0 0.00 ohms or something like that, or one ohm even, that means this wire is good. The next thing I would do is do the same thing to the next wire and test continuity to itself. After I've done that, I will take each of these wires from this connector, connect one of the terminals from my voltmeter, to this and one to ground. Now if this is a ground wire it should have continuity to ground which means it should have anywhere from that 0.001 ohms to that I don't know, 20 ohms is a little getting on the little high side but it has continuity. Um, if it is OL that's a problem that uh, look into that though because sometimes these ground through the controller but if it's supposed to ground if this wire is supposed to ground to the frame somewhere and it has no continuity to ground, that's a problem. 
but double check and make sure it's not supposed to be grounded through the controller because remember we have the controller unplugged um i would do the same thing to this wire this wire is obviously not supposed to be a ground wire um, so it should not have any continuity to ground this wire should be that ol reading or that mega ohms reading on the voltmeter as far as resistance because if this has continuity to ground that's a problem you don't want to have a power wire or a signal wire or any other wire besides a ground wire having continuity to ground back to how i was talking about you need to have the controller unplugged this is where the controller being plugged in can cause you problems with this resistance check because there's internal connections in there that could lead to a false reading on this particular test um, but signal wires power wires, anything, can wires, anything like that, you should not have any resistance or con you shouldn't have any continuity to ground. You want to see a high resistance or an OL reading on your thing. The next thing I want to talk about is voltage readings. So this end will be plugged into the controller, key on, which by the way, you never key on doing ohm readings. Always key off. You could possibly blow the fuse in your voltmeter. Uh, the first thing you need to know is know how many volts that this particular sensor is supposed to have or solenoid, whichever one you're testing is supposed to have. Um, so then you would find the power wire and put one of the leads in here and one of the leads on the ground. Now if you swap them and put like the negative lead from the voltmeter in here and the positive lead on the ground, it's still going to read, it's just going to say negative, um, which isn't a big deal. but. So you want to read the, the voltage coming to here. Uh, some applications have like five volts out of the controller, some have 12, some have 24, depending on the system voltage. But you want to make sure that, that is in spec, because if it's not getting voltage, it's not going to be able to send a signal back to the controller. Um, the next thing you can test with the voltage is testing in between these two pins, because this is one of these is ground. So that tests kind of your whole power flow through your circuit. And that is kind of what I wanted to show you guys about using a voltmeter and how I would test harnesses. Now that's a basic testing. Uh, you start getting into systems that are a little bit more complicated, more pins. It's pretty much the same thing though. You want to test each individual wire in the circuit for continuity. And if you find a problem, you want to break it down between if there's multiple connectors in that circuit, just keep working your way back until you find which section the problem is in. But again, we want to use DC voltage on our voltmeter and ohms. Uh, you're probably not going to use amp very much. I don't hardly ever use that, but the, the ohms and the voltage is what I use most.